Hello and welcome back once again to our tutorials and uh, today this is not so much a tutorial but just a couple of important points to keep in mind. We're going to work with uh, green screen compositing in After Effects and there are already some great tutorials uh, out there about that. So I don't want to cover the same information but I want to um, show some important things to keep in mind especially when dealing with the difficult key and one that might have reflective items in there that re will reflect the green scheme, which is a bit of a problem. So let's take a look at this uh, full composition here. I'm going to start turning off some layers and um, we'll uh, turn off this uh, background and you can see the the uh, composition color right here. I've got a few other items here, some uh, light wrap and all that that I'm going to turn off and we'll just take a look at our our composite right here in the edges. So everything is looking okay, looking pretty good. There are some little details here, uh, fine details like this, hair, and these can be kind of difficult. Now I'm using the, the key light uh, keyer in After Effects, which is a great one and has a combination of three different effects. But there's some things to keep in mind when pulling a difficult key that might include hard edges like this and also soft and more uh, delicate things like this, and especially with um, with reflective surfaces. And that's um, the pulling a, a good key might be more than a one step process. So I'm going to turn off a couple layers here and see what we have. I've got one layer that's giving me a little more detail in the dark areas. And I'll turn off this other layer here that says Dancer. And uh, there we go. So here's my, my dark detail key right here to put some detail back in. Um, notice how that's a pre-comp and then um, the dancer is also a pre-comp. So I'm going to open up right here and look at the layers that have gone into this, into this comp and we'll see what's going on. All right. So um, you can see that here I've got uh, three layers just to get me the majority of what I have here in my composition. I've got a core mat, a background key, and an outer edge. And let's take a look and see why I'm using three different layers. This is basically the same footage with um, different uh, keying and also some rotoscoping on there. So I'll turn these off and go to this background one and look at our effects. And so you can see here's my key light and key cleaner and vent uh, spill suppressor. I've also done a simple choker. I'm going to turn these off and we'll see the original footage here. And I'll turn off some curves and some color balance. So this is my original footage. So it actually might look all right. In fact, they've got some uh, markers taped up here that I can use uh, for tracking. But actually, um, there was a good bit of noise here. And um, uh, the way it was shot, there's not a whole lot of, of contrast. And what we really wanted some contrast here. And it turned out to be a rather, rather difficult key. And I want to show you some items here as we go through this. That with these uh, metallic items right down here on the belt, if I zoom in, here we go. And I'll just kind of go through this a bit, a little frame by frame. You can see that we've got some, some chrome metallic reflective items here. And they're reflecting the green screen all around. So the problem there is that the keyer can't really distinguish between the background green here and the green that is found in these pieces here. So what you might get is you might get some holes uh, in your, your main item here with uh, just the standard uh, keying. So I'm going to turn on my settings here and see the keyer go to work. And of course, the, the, uh, the key light and the combination with the key cleaner and the vent still suppressor are really, really nice. They work well together. So um, it's done a fairly good job. But what you might not be able to see is uh, right in here, I'm going to change this color and go to my composition settings and just pull up something that uh, should be easier to see right there. And maybe something like, like that. There we go. So what I can see is that there's a good bit of, of transparency here because of the reflectiveness of the green right here in these areas. And so I would have holes right here. 
And let me just turn on my uh, transparency grid and we can definitely see that. <clears throat> so actually in the whole thing here has some, uh, some transparency overall. So what I'm going to do is um, turn on my main key and we'll take a look and see what that looks like. All right. So here's my, my main key. And um, if I take a look at my, my settings here, there's my key light and, and key cleaner and um, my uh, spill suppressor. And if I turn this uh, back on there, yeah, same thing. So I'm getting a um, good bit of, of transparency along the edge, and that might be okay. But a real problem is going to be right here where I'm getting holes in the inner part of, of my, um, my key. And also right here, this top is so white, it's reflecting the green, and it's, it's dropping away as well. So let me show you what I've done to combat that. I have this top layer here, which is called Core Mat. So I'm going to turn that on. And basically, I've just taken each of these and duplicated it. What you see here is that I've kept the key light. And of course, there is the key light right there, and there's the key cleaner, and there's the advanced spill suppressor. But I've actually turned off the key light. And what that has done is this, is that you can see that it's filled in these areas here. If I turn on the key light, and it's going to try and, and key out this green here, it's going to give me <clears throat> some, um, some transparency where I don't want it. So if you just duplicate the, the layer with, all, with your key, all your key elements here, and you just turn off the key light, then these parts here will go, um, will go fully opaque. And what's taken the green out is, of course, the, the key cleaner. If I turn off the key cleaner, and maybe the advanced spill suppressor, there we go. So there's that green coming back in. And what's getting rid of that and getting some nice neutral color here is the advanced spill suppressor, actually. And then we'll turn back on the key cleaner. So how am I keeping it um, opaque here but transparent right here if there's no key cleaner? Well, the answer to that is this. I actually did some rotoscoping. So this would be what's considered uh, a core mat. Uh, or in this case, it's an articulated mat because I have to kind of animate it. Let me open up and show you the mask right here. So here's my mask, and here are the keyframes. So as I've duplicated this layer, I've turned off the key light so that it um, uh, gives me the opacity here with all the shiny stuff. But if I didn't have the mask, set the mask to none, then there you go. It would give me all that background. So in an, a difficult keying situation, what you might need to do is duplicate your, your keyed element, turn off the key light, and then do a bit of rotoscoping. And this is not very accurate. You can see that um, I'm just really trying to get this core here. In some cases, my core is going very close to the edge, and so my rotoscoping is a little more uh, accurate right there. But over here, you can see it's uh, pretty rough because the... Um, the keyer right here on this layer is actually oh, is actually um, uh, doing the job of the edge for me. And so let me zoom out here a little bit. You can see that roto shape, and I'll open this up, and now you can see the, the keyframes for it. And as I go forward, you can see how I'm putting in keyframes where necessary. And of course, like all rotoscoping, I'm trying to keyframe as little as possible and let After Effects do all the work, but a decent amount of keyframes were needed. But this is what I had to do in order to put back in these shiny parts that are going to be so green because they're reflective that they're going to turn out transparent. And the same thing with these white parts right here that were reflecting a lot of the green. If it becomes too green, again, the keyer can't distinguish between that and the background and just keys them out. So you don't really want that. And what you might notice here is that this is uh, my core mat, and I've put this in just to just to um, put back in these uh, shiny reflective parts that are capturing too much green. So that's looking good. And what you might notice here on my background key is that I've got some um, 
some roto mats on there as well. So this mat right here is my garbage mat. Let's uh, click on this one and open it up. So this is my garbage mat. And some uh, studios, they call it a G mat. I worked at a place for a few days, not really knowing why they were saying G mat. They're actually referring to the garbage mat. And so this just really quick, quickly crops out any junk out here. I don't worry about keying. I only care about the edge. And I've also done a subtract mat right here to take out the hair because I was noticing these edges were really kind of um, much too uh, much too harsh and wasn't really giving me any good hair detail. And you can see I've also kind of lost the detail of these like little cords and coins. Don't do that. Cords and coins and things that were kind of flapping around here. Often as you get a good um, a good edge right here, a nice soft uh, or a nice clear crisp edge right here, you might lose these little details. And so right here, I've got this outer edge uh, mask, which I'll turn that one on. And that has put these, um, let's uh, turn that back on there. So that has actually put, um, there we go. That has actually put these small details back in. So I'll turn that off. You can see those little details right here. They got kind of lost along here. If I turn that back on, now these little details are coming back, these little flapping cords and things like that. And then, of course, the, the hair with little tr translucency and little fine little strands here, which is what you're looking for. So to pull this final, uh, final key, which gives me good detail on, on areas, let's just uh, jump ahead here, gives me good detail on areas that have tiny little bits, like these little cords and things that are kind of, uh, flapping and blurry, you know, along here and here. And also with the hair, I've got one uh, key dedicated to just that. I've got one key that is the, um, the full background. And this, of course, has the garbage mat. And I'm subtracting out this hair. So this hard edge, I lose that and I get the soft edge here. And then I've got one key, which is uh, the core and that is the one that has the key light turned off so that with the uh, advanced spill suppressor, it's getting rid of that green color cast and uh, it's turning it to this kind of this nice neutral gray, which works well for metallic and, and chrome and reflective stuff in this case. But with the key light turned off, then now that's giving me a uh, full opacity here as opposed to the transparency. And this is what you might need to do whether it's Photoshop or After Effects or whatever, pulling a good mat or mask is often more than a one-step process. And so I just want you to see the various tools that you might need to get a good edge. It's often, it's a tricky um, balance to get a nice clean edge here, but then the soft, um, especially if they blur and move around uh, semi-transparent edges uh, right here. So then the, um, the end result, if they are all, uh, put together, you know, it was working well. And if I turn on this uh, this background layer, it's that nice soft edge right there. <clears throat> I'm not going to get that nice soft edge along with a really um, clear edge right there as well. You know, that's that's not really going to happen unless I um, am doing multiple um, multiple mats. Or multiple layers with different settings on the mats. So that's um, really what we're all about today is how to get these combination soft detailed edges and then harder edges uh, so that you have um, uh, a good end result.